Okay, so we're going to look at how to use a work done formula to find the work done by or against different forces. So imagine a person pushing a box up a slope. So if he applies a force F applied and he moves a distance S parallel to the slope, we can say that the work done by the man is the force applied times the distance parallel to the slope. And where is this energy coming from? This is going to come from the energy stored in his muscles, okay, so in his legs and his arms and so on. Okay, another force acting on the box is the weight, and the distance we're parallel to that is the height. So we can say that the work done against the force of gravity is mg times h, the height. Well, that's just another way of saying gravitational potential energy. Okay, so the work done pushing against the weight is, this, and, uh, is gained as the gravitational potential energy by the box. Another force of uh, resistive force. So here we can do the um, the the resistive force times the distance moved parallel to the resistive force, which is again just the S, um, the distance parallel to the slope. Now, work done against resistive forces, that's actually just another way of saying the dissipated energy. Because if you're pushing against a resistive force like air resistance or friction, the, well, that's, that energy is going to be transferred to the surrounding, dissipated surrounding as uh, thermal energy. Okay, finally, the other force on this box is the normal reaction force. So this box actually doesn't move parallel to the normal reaction force. It's moving perpendicular to the normal reaction force. So it's moving this way and this way. So if we do the force times the distance moved parallel to the uh, normal reaction force, it doesn't move normal to the reaction force. So if we would multiply by zero. The normal work done against the normal reaction force is actually zero. Okay, so a ball of mass one kilogram is thrown vertically upward at a velocity of eight meters per second. The ball reaches a height of 2.8 meters. Calculate the average resistive force when the ball is moving upwards. So there is resistive force, there is air resistance. So we can't just use our suvats uh, in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to use energy. So at the bottom, the uh, before the when the ball leaves a boy's hand, it has kinetic energy because it's moving at eight meters per second. So we can calculate the uh, kinetic energy there, 32 joules. And at the top, all that kinetic energy, or well, some of that kinetic energy, has turned into gravitational potential energy, mgh. So if I calculate that with a height of 2.8 meters, I get 2, uh, 27.468 joules. And as you can see, there is a difference. Okay, so where's that energy gone? Because we know energy can't be created or, um, or destroyed. So it's just been transferred from one form to another. So we've got uh, 4.532 joules missing. Well, that energy is the energy that's been dissipated to the surrounding. Okay, the, what, what do we mean by that? So as the ball was going up, it was pushing against the air particles. So it was doing work against the air resistance uh, force. And so that's been transferred to surrounding. So we can say that the work done against the resistive forces, which is the dissipated energy, is equal to the resistive force times the distance moved parallel to the resistive force. In this case, it, the resistive force on the ball is going to be downwards, and the distance moved parallel to that is actually the height. So if we put those numbers in, the dissipated energy, and then we've got the resistive force and the height there, we rearrange, we get a resistive force of 1.6 meters. A drone is at rest on the ground. The person controlling the drone drives it vertically upwards by a height of 30 meters. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture and label it as I go. Otherwise, it will be too much information for me to keep in my head. The speed of the drone when it reaches this height is 9.5 meters per second. Okay, so we know it starts off at rest as well. Okay, um, the mass of the drone is 0 0.45 kilograms. Okay, that's not going to change. Um, and the work done by the battery during this time is 260 joules. Okay, we need to calculate the resistive force. Okay, firstly, we know it's going up. And that means its gravitation potential energy is going to increase. Okay, so that's its gravitation potential energy. It's mass times the gravitational field strength times um, the height. Also, the top is moving as well. It's moving at 9.5 meters per second. So that means it's going to have kinetic energy. So half mv squared, I've got that there. Okay. At the bottom, what kind of energy did it have? So the, all the energy it had at the bottom was stored in this battery. As if, for example, chemical energy, let's say that's the battery there. And it's going to store, and that energy that is going to transfer from the battery is around 
260 joules so of course it might have more than this much energy but it's not going to use that so we're not we don't care about that okay so as you can see these numbers don't add up at the top it's got uh, around 150 joules of energy while at the bottom is about 260 that means we've lost energy in the way and we the lost energy the energy dissipated surrounding we can use to calculate the average resistive force because there must have been some air resistance pushing uh, the drone as it was going up so let's find the difference here so if I, i've um, added them up and subtracted it from the initial energy i've got 107.3 joules missing or dissipated surrounding and that is the dissipated energy there and so we can see that is the work done against resistive forces so if I, so I, that will allow me to calculate the force the resistive force if i multiply by the distance moved parallel to the resistive force which is the height in this case because it's moving directly upwards and the air resistance is going to be downwards which is still parallel so if i do that if i put those numbers in i get a resistive force of 3.6 newtons okay calculate um we're going to try to calculate the average resultant force on the drone during its uh flight okay so when it's moving up so we're kind of trying to find the average resultant force okay we know it's accelerating when it goes from the bottom so it's going from u to some final velocity v here Okay, and we know we've got the S here as well. Okay, so we can use, use our SUVAT to find the acceleration in this case. Okay, so if we find our SUVAT, so our S is 30 meters up, and our U is zero, and our A is 9.5 meters per second. Now, I know it's tempting to use 9.81 as your acceleration because you're so used to it, but remember, that's only when objects are falling uh, without any other force acting on them except the weight okay so we need to find the acceleration that's what we're trying to find so the suvat will use the one without the t in it which is v squared equals u squared plus uas if i rearrange and i put the numbers in uh, u is zero so it makes life easier i get my acceleration there and now i want to find the result of force i can use newton's second law f equals ma put the numbers in there it's mass times the acceleration which is calculated that gives me 0 0.68 newtons